Hello everyone and thanks for joining School of the American Rifle. Today we're going to do a barrel physical. This is a new out of wrapper V7 barrel. This is an 18 inch model. This is a fluted model. It appears to have a spray on finish of some type. If you look closer up to the barrel extension area you can see where they had masked it off. The line isn't perfectly even. That does not affect anything when you put the barrel nut on there. You're not going to notice any of this. They masked this off because it's the proper thing to do. Whenever you're getting a barrel or a lot of a lot of areas of the gun that have a function or a friction surface or a tolerance that's important, you want to make sure that you don't have those parts painted. So they masked off the gas block journal area. They masked off the threads. They masked off the barrel extension so that didn't get coated. All those areas can cause you issues. I mean, even inside of the gas block, they masked off and then rehoned it. And that can cause difficulty with assembling things or causing tolerance issues. So if they had painted this area when you try to put the gas block on, it won't slide on without doing some kind of modification to the gas block or sanding the finish off the gas block journal. So I did notice when I unpackaged it that the crush shoulder has a little bit of finish here. That can throw off how true the muzzle device sits on the barrel. We're going to check whether our thread concentric gauge to see if that threw anything off. We're going to install our gas block to see if we can trust the location of our dimple. So we'll go ahead and do that now. But before we do, let's measure our gas port size. So we're going to go to the pin gauge box. And I believe we're in the 90 range. So let's grab our, let's say, 96 pin gauge, 0 0.096. And that goes in. We have a good bit of wiggle there. 0 0.096. So let's go up to 0 0.100. 0 .100 goes in there. A little bit of wiggle. Let's do 103. 103 fits with a tiny bit of wiggle. 104. 104 is a snug fit and goes all the way down into the bore. So 0 0.104 is the gas port size for this 18 inch barrel. This has rifle length gas so that's not a, an obscenely large gas port size considering that it is a 18 inch barrel and not a 20 inch gun usually guns uh, with a 20 inch barrel and a rifle length gas system will have somewhere in the 0 .090 um, range so it's like I said it's not a huge port all things being considered depending on the ammo you're going to shoot in it it's definitely not a small port though alright next up we're going to put our gas block on Going to slide this over the barrel, make sure I don't get any resistance. What we're going to do is check and see if the dimple here in the barrel is exactly 180 degrees out. Now they include a pin, and this is drilled for a cross pin. It does not have a dowel pin, they include a coil pin with it. It's not a split roll pin. You'll see it's wrapped up sort of like a roll of paper towels. These can be a little bit more difficult to install if you don't do it right. So I always advise people if you're going to put these in, um, use a good roll pin starter. It'll keep the inside from being pushed out and use grease. All right, we'll put that down and then it comes with a set screw. And what I like to see about this is it does have a tooth set screw. So these little teeth on the top there, right at the, right at the cap, they bite into the barrel. They help hold things in place. Regular set screws will just have a cup tip and they don't really bite into anything. So we're just going to put it in place to see if we can get our gas block positioned properly. And when we look inside with the bore scope, you can't use all bore scopes for this purpose. I'm not going to use a handled wrench. I'm just going to finger tighten that set screw. But we want to make sure that our gas block is aligned. Like I said, you can use other bore scopes, but they might not have the clarity um, to look up into the gas port and actually see if things are lined up. So we'll start with the back and work our way to the front. Let's check headspace. Now the owner is going to use a forward controls design bolt carrier group in his build. So he sent that with the barrel. So we're going to check headspace. So 223 go, 14636. Rotates, we're good. 556 five, go. 
rotates. We're good. 556 five, steel. This should not close. And it doesn't. So headspace is good if you use this bolt with this barrel. Now that doesn't mean that the barrel is in spec. It could mean that this bolt has a slightly shorter headspace tolerance and this has a slightly longer headspace tolerance and they equal out or balance each other out. Now this is fine. What's important is that the particular barrel headspaces to your particular bolt. So to isolate an issue, let's say we had a headspace problem and one of these gauges closed that it shouldn't or shouldn't have. So I'll break out these. These are Pacific Tool and Gauge headspace gauges. These remove the barrel, I'm sorry, the bolt from the equation. This is just checking the barrel to make sure that the barrel extension and chamber are cut to a certain dimension that make sure that will make sure that it works with a bolt that's in spec. So we'll drop this in here and we try to rotate it clockwise and it does rotate. So this is a go gauge. So the chamber is cut to 556 five, go specs. We found that up by using the headspace gauges. This is a no go. We don't have a field for this particular type of gauge. Now if it closes on the no-go, it doesn't mean that the chamber or the headspace is unsafe. It just means that it's a little bit sloppy or long for a new barrel. So headspace is very good on this particular barrel and barrel and bolt combination. No issues there. All right, next thing what I'm going to do is check is the throat dimensions. So I have a couple throat gauges. I have a Michigan's. 5.56 five, throat gauge, and this barrel is marked 5.56, five, let me pull it up, V7, 5.56, five, so it should have a 5.56 five, chamber and throat. So we're going to check this, and this is not checking any other dimensions of this silver area here, it's only checking the throat area, which is from here to there. And I have other gauges I'm going to use, so let me pan over, I'm going to show you how I like to give some contrast on the gauges. So you can use Dicom, steel blue layout fluid or you can use a Sharpie. What we're attempting to do here is see where the gauge is making contact with the barrel. So we can determine where the problem areas might be. So we paint that, and then I need to let it dry before we try to insert it into the chamber. Now you can, the reason I have the Sharpie here is because you can use the Sharpie in place of it. You don't have to buy a thing of layout fluid. You can use a Sharpie. And that works great. I'm also going to put the layout fluid on this gauge here, which I'll explain in a minute what it is. I'm going to do the same thing to this one. All right, now that the layout fluid is dry, we're going to put this into the chamber here in a minute. First, I'm going to check with this gauge. This gauge has 11 lines on it. This is a throat erosion gauge. This is always a this isn't always a pass or fail gauge. I have a green line painted at the front and a red line in the back. This is basically telling me on a new barrel where my throat starts at. So some barrels may start here, some may start here when they're new. Some may start right at the green line. It all depends. It varies from barrel to barrel. What's important is to get a good baseline of where your barrel is so as you shoot the gun you can check what your erosion or accelerated erosion rate is. Just to keep track of things. The most important thing is when you put it into the barrel that it doesn't eat it all the way up, which I mean going up to the red line. That's bad. So we're going to drop this into the barrel. We have 11 lines from 0 to 10. And we are at the second line. So our erosion is at a 1. All right. So that's fine. Nothing wrong with that. Now we're actually going to check the taper or length of the throat. A 223 throat. And this is a good comparison even though they're painted now. The difference in the throat length is this. This is a 223 throat from here. Let me grab my pointer. From here to there is the length of a 223 throat. From here to there is the length of a 556 five, throat. So a pretty dramatic difference. I think that shows a good comparison 
of the differences. So this gauge made by Michigan's checks for that dimension in itself. So if it makes contact, it'll create a line somewhere on here if it's going to stick. So we stick this into the barrel, whether it's assembled into an upper or it's stripped. And I put a little bit of finger pressure, almost like you're pushing someone on the shoulder saying, hey, I'd like your attention. Not crazy, you're not hitting it with a hammer, and I want to see if it sticks. And we had a little bit of sticking action there. So a little bit of pressure, and it sticks. So what I'll do is I'll put it in, and I'll give it just a slight turn so I can see where it's making contact, and pull it out. And let's see if we can get it on camera, and there it is. Can you see the line? Right there. I'm going to try to bring some more light in here. Right there. So the throat is slightly short to be a true 5.56 five, throat. Now what we're going to do is follow up behind that. Our headspace was good, but another thing that we check in classes is, is to make sure that the dimensions of the chamber, the headspace dimension, which is from the bolt face to the datum line or the taper in the chamber, is only one factor. That only tells me that the headspace is the proper length. It doesn't mean that the dimensions of the chamber, so basically from here all the way up or on the neck or on the shoulder area are the right dimensions. I've seen many, many barrels in my time that had a too small of a neck area, the shoulder area was really rough, or the dimensions of the chamber were off and it wouldn't allow around the seat all the way, or they were just oversized in some circumstances. Oversized is a little less rare than undersized, but these will tell me, based on several factors, whether or not the dimensions of the chamber here are fine, the throat's fine, or the throat's fine. We're going to put this into the chamber. This is the 223 function gauge. What I'm going to do is I'm going to see the difference in depth. So this goes in here, and then I should be able to knock it out, and I can. So it's not sticking anywhere, see? So this chamber is good. If you don't have an expensive gauge like this, you can use a factory round from a reputable ammunition manufacturer. You put the live round in there in a safe condition, and then you should be able to put a little bit of finger pressure on it, and you should just be able to knock it out or tap it, and it falls out. If it sticks, it usually means that something is off somewhere in the chamber. So we were able to get this 223 to go in. Let's see if the 556 will go in. It's sticking. So what's the difference? Let me get a cleaning rod. I'm going to pop that out and see if we can detect a line on it. another gauge with a handle on it, which makes it a little bit more easy to extract that. We can do the same thing with this one. So I'm going to put some paint on it while we look at this one. I'll have to let that dry for a minute. So let's see if we can detect a line on this one. And I can. It's very, very faint. It's right there. I'm not sure if you can see this in the camera, but there is a line there. It's very, very faint. It's giving some good contrast right there. But it's very faint. So what we can do now is we can take, and look, I'm getting layout fluid all over my bench. This one's one has a handle on it so I can turn it a little bit and see if we can get some more contrast and we do on this one see the line there so the throat's a little bit short on this gun to be trusted as a 5.56 five, chambering or a 5.56 five, five, throat now does that mean that the barrel is bad or unsafe no it just means that you should be a little bit more careful with higher pressure ammunition. 223 ammunition in here isn't going to give you as many as much of a pressure indicator. 
then 5.56 five, might. So just watch the pressure of the ammo you're shooting. And don't, don't shoot really hot loads out of the gate. Shoot some 2.23 ammo in it. Look at your brass. Look at your primer area. See if it's popping primer. See if the primers are flattened out. See if you're getting ejector swipes or if the extractor area is all tore up. Look at the brass. It'll give you, it'll give you a good indicator of what's going on with the gun. And then from there, you can try some 5.56. Five, and there goes my pick. We'll get that later. We don't need it now anyway. All right, let's set this off to the side. Next, we're going to do the barrel straightness gauge. So this gauge is passed through the barrel. Now, on a new barrel, it's rare that it fails this unless there is a burr from the manufacturing process or the testing um, left some residue in here and it was dirty. But normally, if you have a new barrel, the only thing that you're going to see this fail in is either a burr that's left over from when the crown was cut and machined or there's a burr when they drilled the gas port. On a used barrel, you'll normally see this fail because either the barrel A is bent or because it's excessively fouled with copper fouling or firing residue. So what we're going to do is just drop it in here. I'm going to lift this up a little bit so you can see it's not a magic trick and it should just fall straight through. And it does. You want to make sure you have a padded bench. You don't want this hitting a hard surface and messing up the gauge. Next, what we're going to do is we're going to check to see if the threads and bore are concentric. This is my thread concentric gauge. This checks for run out of 0 .004 or more. So what you'll do, you'll screw this on to the appropriate thread size. Then you'll take this rod and put it in. And if it clears this line, then it means that the bore is concentric to the threads. And it is. So you should, assuming that your mount or suppressor is machined properly, trust this barrel with a suppressor. Assuming that, that it stabilizes the projectiles that you select for this particular barrel. I always want to make sure that your, your projectiles are stable before you screw a can on. All right, from there we're going to do muzzle erosion. This is specific tool and gauge muzzle, muzzle erosion gauge. And again, this isn't really a pass or fail. Of course, a brand new barrel, we don't want this to get eaten up all the way. Um, the Roscoe barrel autopsy that I did recently showed that this was eaten up all the way by the barrel, but that had 26, 27,000 rounds on it. Um, on a new barrel, sometimes that raised burr I talked about that hangs up the barrel straightness gauge can also cause this not to go in. So if you have this gauge from them and it doesn't go in and it's new, it doesn't mean that it's a fail. It just means that you have to fire the gun a little bit to remove that burr or iron it out. So this one we can insert up until this line here. And this particular line is 0.219. So not bad for a new barrel. But again, just gives us a starting point. We can say, okay, at, at new it was 0.219 and let's show you fire 3,000 rounds and it's a 0.220, that's fine. Um, but if it's going all the way up to here, that means something's eroding extremely fast and you should keep an eye on it or remedy that problem. <clears throat> all right, now we're on to the bore scope. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to chuck this up in my vise so we can get a good grab on the barrel. These are pad vise jaws. Don't grab a barrel in a bare vise. You're going to scratch and chew things up. Not good. I'm going to get my bore scope ready. Turn it on. We're going to go in from the back. And this is our barrel extension. Make sure to get a clearer view. These are the barrel extension lugs. You see the little chamfer right there? That's how the bolt locks in the battery. One side isn't chamfered and the, and the other is. On a left-handed barrel extension, you'll see chamfers on both sides. This is the inside of our chamber. You're getting a lot of light. Very, very smooth chamber. our throat area and we have a little bit of transfer from our layout fluid or our dicum. So 
I'll clean that up before I send it back to the owner. This is our throat area. Now what's interesting about this barrel is that you don't see any lands and grooves, see? Look. So this has a polygonal style rifling in the barrel. So what this can give you in some cases is a little bit higher velocity because it seals the projectile to the bore a little better and it's going to foul at a slower rate because there's nothing aggressive biting in the projectile. You can still see a little bit of copper in here. It looks like they test fired it, which almost all manufacturers do. But very, very, very smooth. So initially from the manufacturing process it comes at this smooth or they hand lapped it, but very, very smooth. So assuming all things are right, this should be a very good shooter. We're going to look for our gas port now. See if we have proper alignment. And there we are. Well, we see a little bit of erosion from them test firing it. Let's try to focus up into... Looks like we are slightly misaligned. So I'm going to loosen the gas block some. I may have made that error when I was tightening things up. Look, see how things move? So they move, move, and there we go. So even me some doing a summary hand tightening, I misaligned that gas block. So here it is in this proper dimple. What I'm looking for, you can't see this on a barrel that's been fired a lot because of the firing residue. It blackens everything and it makes it hard to get any light to bounce off of it. But right in this area there, I'm looking for that crown area or the dome of the gas block to be right there. That's perfectly centered. So that tells me my gas block is perfectly aligned. Here's when I tighten it down. So I'm a little, little bit off. Now the important part is, is even though I'm a slight bit off, is that I don't have any areas of the gas block showing at the bottom or at the top. And I'll show you what I don't want to see. You're not going to be able to see this with all bore scopes. But you don't want to see something like that. You don't want to see something like this. This is what you want to see. That's about perfect. That's okay, but not optimal. You'll need to do some gas tube adjustments to straighten things up, but you don't want to see stuff like this or like this. That's bad. So the dimple in the barrel is located in the proper spot. It's a slight bit off. Let's go to the crown and see what we can detect. I can't fit all the way through the barrel because my bore scope is a 17 inch model and this is an 18 inch barrel so I'm going to flip it around in the vise and we'll look at it from the front. And there's our crown. Let me try to change the focus. That's my fingerprints. It looks good. And you can see the, the polygon type rifling, it's sort of like wavy. You don't have those sharp lands and grooves here at the front again as well. So, Not many barrels are made like this. I thought it was interesting to capture on camera. Now as far as that short throat goes, um, just to ease anyone's concern, it doesn't mean that this barrel is bad, it just means that out of the gate you probably shouldn't go cramming 5.56 and NATO pressure ammo on the gun. Just see what ammunition with a slightly lower pressure does. Shoot some 223 through it. But overall, this barrel did very well. They masked off all the areas before they painted it. The threads are concentric. The gas port's a little bit on the larger side, but it's not, it's not a bad thing depending on the ammunition you shoot in it. Um, you could always add something like uh, a BRT insert to the gas block if you thought that it was over gas for the ammunition you choose. You could put a uh, restricted gas tube in it. 
Um, if it was a competition gun or you understood the caveats, you could put an adjustable gas block. There are certain types um, that you should avoid, but that's not the topic of the video. But overall, everything is great on this barrel from what we can detect. Just a slightly short throat. Let's look at the chamber real quick. Inside here, everything is very smooth. The chamber mouth has a good transition, no sharp edge there. The ramps look great. They're not rough, which is things that I like to see on a barrel. Out of the gate, sometimes you get barrels that have very rough ramps or very sharp angles. Everything looks like it's nice and deburred and smooth. That's our V7 barrel. Hope you found this video educational, and thanks for watching.